Today on Inside Xbox, we'll be revealing our extra large lineup of original Xbox backward compatibility games for the month of April. And a surprising celebrity guest dishes on the return of Sam Fisher in Ghost Recon. Plus, Overkill's The Walking Dead, Dead Mouse vs. PUBG, and the latest on Xbox Fan Fest at E3. And the Xbox Spring Update, Robocraft, plus more. This is Inside Xbox. <laughs> I'm Larry Herb, Xbox Live's Major Nelson, along with my besties, Graham Boy, oh. Jeff Rubenstein, <laughs> Alex Aver, and of course, Rakari Austin. How are you guys? Welcome. Privileged. To episode two of Inside Xbox. Yes. Woo. Get ready to strap on your retro rockets because Bill Stilwell from the Xbox Backward Compatibility Team will be right here to deliver a killer list of back compat announcements. And you can't just casually drop Sam Fisher into a new trailer for Ghost Recon Wildlands Year 2 and not expect the internet to take notice. That's why Ubisoft is here with an exclusive interview from the talent behind this fan favorite. We've also got all the gory details on Overkill's The Walking Dead, including the debut of a fascinating new survivor and more on the game itself. Mm, and Xbox Fan Fest guy Chris Money Rumble Munson will be here to share some of the early details on Xbox Fan Fest at E3 2018. E3's just around the corner, yeah. I can't wait, including a slick bit of kiss that you will not want to miss. A slick, slick bit, bit of kiss. kiss. Oh. Oh. Slick bit of kiss. Oh, slick bit of oh my god, there's no kissing. <laughs> it's just kiss. Because we're always kiss. mixing up with you live here on the show. That's why we're live. Obviously, we're live, or we would have retaken that. And that's also why <laughs> Alex and Rukari are standing by at the social desk. They're going to be highlighting the best of your comments, your pictures, your videos throughout the show. So you can at me. That's fine. Uh, use hashtag InsideXbox on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And of course, you can join the conversation live on Mixer. All right, Alex, Ricard, before we get to the news, I tweeted this out this morning asking folks what's going on. What is the buzz at hashtag Inside Xbox? Well, it's certainly going to be that kiss now, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but we asked the community to send in some of their favorite, most ridiculous clips of their own, and let's see if they delivered. And first of all, my all-time favorite, I would say for this day, I've been playing a bunch of Fortnite lately, and they just put out an update which included a, a new weapon, a guided missile. Right, and Larry, you said we're your besties. I, I really feel like we're squad. He's the rocket man! <laughs> <laughs> but hey, what a way to retrieve a down squad mate and that's get him all the way back to safety to get that revive. That's that's one of my favorites there. So kudos to you, Unjust Hero. Nice. All right, so. What do you got for me, Alex? It's tough, I know, the screens are tough. Your turn. All no, right. We got it. Speaking of good teamwork. Oh, you're really gonna go with this I'm one. I'm gonna go with it. Hanzo's <laughs> your main anyway. Uh, this is why there's so much space between us at this desk. Explains, it is, it really does. So first of all, this is ridiculous. We talk about Hanzo and not playing the objective, but Hanzo actually what, what, uses that what, thing. What? The the mean, here. It's literally the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> 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 all right, and I've got one more here. Let's go through. You know what? There's an achievement out there in Rocket League for scoring an aerial goal, and I've yet to be able to do it. I'm never going to be able to do it. So I'm going to pick this clip and pretend it. like it's me. Yeah, well, that's the first. <laughs> Somebody finally does. But a ridiculous goal, absolutely glorious. Just look at it one more time. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And that's it. I think that'll do it for those that, that quick check-in, yeah? And uh, thanks, everybody, for sending in your clips. We're going to go ahead and give you, uh, all of you who sent in your clips, uh, a code for the new ID at Xbox game, Hellblade. And for the rest of you, be sure to follow at Xbox on Twitter so you can send us your great clips, and we can send you your code after the show for those of you who want. Now keep sharing your comments, questions, images, and videos throughout the show to hashtag InsideXbox. Who knows? you might have a shiny new code to show for it. But not me, either way. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell from all the live chatter that's going on right now that fans are getting restless, wanting to know about one thing, and that's what's next in line for backwards compatibility. So Larry, what is the scoop? Thanks, Rikari, but we just showed Bill Stillwell the Reddit thread on back compat, and he needs a minute to scrape his jaw off the floor. And when I say a minute, I mean gone in 60 seconds. Welcome to Majors Minute, where I highlight a few of the items that have caught my eye over the last few days. Are you ready? Start the timer. I love seeing our first public demo of State of Decay 2 at PAX East. Survival, combat, base building, scavenging, tactics. Everybody tackled this demo differently, which really, that's the name of the game. I saw the Xbox One X enhanced version of Hellblade. Unbelievable. I can't even better gameplay. Classic Ninja Theory available 
tomorrow. Divinity Original Sin 2 was just announced for Xbox One. Old school RPG depth, massive combat creativity, split screen co-op, PvP, and more critical acclaim than Fortnite in a high school cafeteria. The Miramar Sale map, that map is available for PUBG. It's coming in May. And you know what, chicken dinner? In the desert, I hear it's a sandwich. The million dollar Halo World Championship final start in three days right here in Seattle. All details at halowaypoint.com. Destiny 2's Go Fast update recently launched, and I gotta tell you, it's so zippy, it feels like they cracked the game open, poured in some cold brew, and can somebody tell me what year it is? Spyro the Dragon Trilogy remastered on Xbox One this year. Awesome and totally unexpected. And our E3 first game announcement. Oh, no E3 news, we're all out of time. But. Stay tuned for our close encounter with Player Unknown and special guest pinata, Dead Mouse. But first, Bill Stillwell is back with Graham and Jeff, ready to announce the next wave of original Xbox Back Compat titles. Nicely done, Larry. He's Thanks for that. Dying to use that microphone I know. for a long time. I tell you what, I didn't realize I was so ready for Major's Minute to come back. There you go. Now we are joined by Bill Stilwell from the Xbox Backward Compatibility Team, who is wearing an incredible hockey jersey here, by the way, Bill. Check my, this out. My NHL 94 Sega Genesis hockey jersey. That's quality. You gotta make Fritzky's head bleed. That's what the, <laughs> that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, if you spill ketchup, he's done it. Uh, it's actually, it's an exciting day for fans of Back Compat. We teased the original Xbox Back Compat announcements for the show, and there's, the response was great. A few of them may have slipped out today, and I just wanna say to the Reset Era thread poster who said, oh, there's no way they're gonna have more than this. Just wait. You're going to yes. see it right now. You are wrong. All right. So how, how's the team feeling? You've been real busy. Yeah, it's been a busy year. Uh, I think since the holidays, the team's really delivered an amazing amount of games. I mean, they've just been kind of cranking. And while all of that has been going on and while the 360 games have been coming out, uh, in the back was always that note of, hey, the original Xbox games were coming too. We had another wave coming out. And uh, now it's time to talk about them. You must have seen all the buzz that's been going around since we teased this announced yes. last week. I mean, that must make the, the team feel really I, I think so. I think it's, it's always rewarding to know that what you work on is something that people are excited about. And uh, that's, what, that's what motivates the team. That's what drives them to, nice. to do what they do. You're well, a hero. <laughs> it's not me. It's, it's an amazing team of engineers, and uh, they get all the credit. Very good of you. Well, l l listen, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I want to see this list. Right, so without further ado, here are the original Xbox Back Compact games coming this month in April. Oh, my God, Morrowind. So That's Morrowind. a good one. We've got Breakdown. We've got Conquer. We've got Jade Empire. Jade Empire. Oh, I love this one. SSX3. Blinks the Time Sweeper. He's very close to my heart. Hunter the Reckoning. Panzer so, Dragoon's in there. A lot of people wanted Panzer Dragoon Panzer or Dragoon's to. We can't even game. keep up. Star Wars, <laughs> KOTOR 2. Look at all these Star Wars titles. <laughs> like an eye test. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars Jedi Knight. Uh, Jedi Academy. Jedi Starfighter. Star Wars Republic. Public Commando. Does, does that make seven Star yes. Wars titles now on OG Xbox One? Mercenaries, Playground of Destruction. I love nice. Peter Stormare. Destroy All Humans, MX Unleashed, and Full Spectrum Warrior, and uh, Panzer Elite Action, Fields of Glory. You, you wanted that one, didn't you? That was, yeah, that was on my list. You're, you're, what an incredible list. Yeah, it's a great list. And uh, the publisher supports, you know, this is a tougher set of games because they're so much older. Uh, licensing a lot is a lot harder but the publisher support. You saw Disney and Star Wars. I mean, they just, they've jumped on board and it's been great. Yeah. I'm super excited about some of these games. Yeah, I, personally, I, uh, uh, Jade Empire, that was Jade the, Empire. my first Western RPG. I just have some great memories about it. Yeah. And I just, uh, oh, I can't wait. It was the first time, first, for me at least, the first Bioware game I played. And I think the first Bioware game a lot of people a played, people played KOTOR yeah. as well. Uh, we're getting to see all of these here in Back and Pat. Yeah, absolutely. Were there any in that list that you're particularly, as a gamer yourself, really uh, excited about? Panzer Dragoon Orta is oh, nice. one that I'm, I'm really excited about. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good one to finally get back to homing lasers. Yeah. All right. So right. I think that, we can take a look at them, right? We can yeah. take a look well, at that, some that's of these the thing. Improvements. I think a, a lot of these games, they, they don't look how you remember. They look better than you remember. Yes. And that's because y y your team has actually been able to coax out a, a significant amount of visible improvement. And we're seeing that right here. Um, so what, you brought the old teams back together and they started coding and how did this happen? No, no, it was, we talked about this before. Uh, one of the things that happened when we first started looking at original Xbox games, 
Uh, we, have, we have a technology called the Haichi method named after Eric Haichi, the developer who did it. And what he does is he enhances the resolution <laughs> and actually, and, and you cool. first saw this with KOTOR when we, when we first showed it, the developer themselves said, I like the way the game looks now because it's how I remember it, not how it actually was. And you start to see that when you see this. And basically what it takes is in, where you would normally have one pixel of resolution, mm -hmm. we can have a lot more pixels. So instead of it being black or white, you can have three black and one white and you can increase the detail uh, as it expands out. And it really shows through in these games. And everything, things are smoother as well. So it's not yeah. just, I feel like the pixels, but really. Yeah, great. well, there's, there's effects that happen when you're a little bit blockier mm -hmm. and you get sort of the shimmery effect and things like that in the older versions of the game that just go away right. when we've enhanced the visuals. So talk us through some of the specific uh, improvements we're seeing here. I mean, clearly it looks a lot sharper. This looks smoother. That was my character I used in Jade Empire. Oh, nice. That's very go. good. What, what are the excited. particular technical improvements we're seeing here? So all of this happens at the emulation layer. The game itself thinks it's running exactly the same way it always ran. It never right. sees anything different. And what's key for a lot of these games is that the developer, you know, the artists that created these, these assets, that created these imagery, we're now able to show them at the resolution that they were created at and closer to the, the true intent as opposed to where they were limited before on what the output was for the technology at the time. Uh, and the games just look so much cleaner, they look so much smoother, details are more present, and uh, everything just, it just feels like a better game when you play it. That's awesome. There's something poetic about the game not knowing that it looks <laughs> yes. as good as it does. It, it, exactly. You don't know your own that. strength. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, what other Xbox One features will we be able to um, to, to use with these games? Well, ultimately, these are just like any other Xbox One game. So all the features that the Xbox One offers in terms of parties and other things, when the game, if the game supports it, you can take advantage of those in the game as well. So Excellent. I can imagine two things people want to know. One is, how do I get these? And two is, when can I play them? So uh, we're going to have a couple different release dates for different sets of games. Some of them are going to come out on the 17th. Some of them are going to come out on the 26th. Uh, and we'll post that on the Xbox Wire, the specifics of which ones come out when. Yep. Um, in addition to that, though, like any of the other back compact games, if you own the disc, you put the disc in, it'll initiate the download. If you own the game digitally, you can, or you buy it digitally, you can go and ready install and just install it straight from there. So you may already have these games. That's right. If you have that disc, you go dust off that drawer, you pull it out and you find it, you pop it in your... Right. In, in your Xbox One when the game launches and you'll be ready to go. We're seeing some Battlefront 2 on screen here. Now this is going to be a trip to go back and play this. Yeah, this will, be, this will be a really cool one to see. God, uh, it looks so crisp. The Star Wars engagement has been pretty phenomenal and I'm super excited about a lot of these games. Yeah, right. I think a lot of people will love playing through them again. Yeah. Now that they have 4K TVs and things have changed a lot, I think Absolutely. I Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a great list of OG Xbox backward compatibility games. What's going on in the world of 360 back compatibility? Well, the technology that we used for originally for the Xbox original games, we then took and applied that to Xbox One X to have Xbox One X enhanced 360 games. And in fact, we have a new set of enhanced games also coming out, and they are launching today, including nice. a, today, a, today, right today, now. Today, today, including today. a new title. Whoa, here, here we go. go. Uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, Red Dead Redemption, Darksiders, Gears of War 2, Portal 2, and Sonic Generations. And Sonic Generations is new to the 360 back compat program all up, and it's releasing while it's enhanced as well. Amazing. That's a great list. Yeah, I mean, those... Star Wars Force Unleashed, I love that game. My son actually plays it all the time, so I can't wait to see that enhanced. That's they really they all look unbelievable. Um, I will say that Red Dead looks amazing. Uh, Force Unleashed looks great, and Sonic Generations really pops with the color. And right. you said so, today. Oh, today. All right. Well, why are we still sitting here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm I want done. to get back into Red Dead wrap, Redemption. We We're done. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a brilliant way to go back to Red Dead Redemption now as well, right? And see yeah, it I think so. For it, it, it looks, it, it's pretty stunning. Okay. Excellent. Bill, thank you. Thank you. So there you have it. A grand total of 19 titles coming online in April for OG Back Compat. So that's more than double the number featured in the initial release. Plus, we've got brand new Xbox One X enhanced 360 titles. You just saw the list there, amazing list. They look and feel fresher than ever and just like Gears of War 2. So do you like the list or are you making a fist? I want you to beam your reactions to hashtag InsideXbox and Rukari and Alex will feature your comments later in the show. Keep speaking in rhymes. It's working <laughs> out for you. Uh, up next, a celebrity guest that I can hardly wait to talk with about the future of Ghost Recon Wildlands. And we'll also have the, and the return of uh, Stealth Legend. 
Sam Fisher, and we've got Overkill's The Walking Dead, Xbox Fan Fest at E3 2018, I can't believe we're only two months away, and PUBG, and, and just so, so much more. I don't know how we're gonna fit it all in. But before we step off the back compat train, we had a chance to catch up with Rod Ferguson, studio head of the Coalition and executive producer for Gears of War 2, about what it's like to see his groundbreaking title, Gears of War 2, enhanced on Xbox One X. Resurrected like a phoenix, you might say. You might, you might not. <laughs> Probably the number one thing people ask about is for a Gears 2 upgrade and to be able to see that on the Enhanced Now on, on the Xbox One X, it just, it looks so cool. There's a lot that Gears 2 brought to the franchise and to revisit it now 10 years later and to see it look so good at 4K, it was just phenomenal. For Gears 2, we really wanted the scale to be about a war and not just a little battle the way the Gears 1 was. And so that really sets the scale. That's opening cinematic with Prescott and then getting onto the Derrick and then riding the Derrick to land down and meeting Ty. I just love that moment and, and the way that it all came together and fighting Brumox and fighting a corpser and to have it all come crisply through in 4K, it just, you're back in it. Like it, you kind of, you feel like you're back playing Gears 2 again and you just want to get back into it and keep playing. To me, it's kind of miraculous that they can do these enhancements without touching the game code. Like with the fact that we as a developer of the game don't have to do anything and it's all just the back pad team doing it. Like I just love the fact that I can go back and play the game and it didn't take anything from our team. It's Ty with you. No, oh, he jumped out before launch, but I see another lift up ahead. Gears 1 came in super hot and we felt like we had sacrificed some things around storytelling and gameplay that we really wanted to bring forward with Gears 2. And so like the Maria moment for us was it established a bar for us in the franchise. The fact that we had a franchise that you can go from sort of comic booky action to kind of straightforward military to kind of super emotional. Like you could be laughing in one moment and crying in the next. And the fact that this was all kind of done in large men in armor and chainsaws, like it, you know, it was crazy. Why is Gears 2 uh, the most requested revisit? I think it has a lot to do with just the, how the game felt. I think there's a lot of things around the way multiplayer felt in Gears 2, and especially I know like River is one of the number one map requests that we still haven't fulfilled to do it. I feel that all the time. Uh, so I think you know some of the locations for multiplayer, but I, I think it's the old school horde, like living by your wits, that, that there weren't fortifications and there weren't systems in place, that it basically was planting shields, plant grenades, and hold up and fight for your life. And um, I think that kind of old school gameplay is what people really want to revisit with a contemporary visual. And I think the idea of having it at 4K now allows for that, so people can go back and have that nostalgia and that gameplay they really want, but have it look awesome on their 4K TV. Gears 2 looks just delicious on Xbox One X. I wonder if I can still make Wave 50 in a hardcore. Pro tip, use those shields in the doorways. Now, in just a moment, we'll check in with Rakari and Alex to see how fans are reacting to the back compat news. But first, it's time for a couple of quick updates, this time without the clock. First up, in honor of the Gears of War 2 Xbox One X enhanced, all downloadable content for the game is now free. That includes every multiplayer map and the Road to Ruin deleted scene from the campaign. If that doesn't make you strap on your oversized boots and rev up a Lancer, I don't know what will. And don't forget that Gears of War 2 is available as part of Xbox Game Pass. Whether you own it on disc, digitally, or are a member of Xbox Game Pass, now's the time to revisit this beloved entry in the franchise. And don't forget that the first Wednesday showdown for Forza Racing Championship 2018 is tomorrow, April 11th. The first set of race flies off the line at 2 p.m. Eastern, and the showdown number two begins at 9 p.m. Eastern. I just weep when I see these lap times. They're so good. Just incredible. All right, check out all the details at ForzaRC.com. Finally, the MineCon Earth 2018 live stream was announced just this very morning. And, well, take a look. Minecon Earth is back. Bigger, better, and more craftier. Gather your favorite friends, family, and tame wolves to watch a Minecraft extravaganza on Saturday, September 29th. Featuring live gameplay and real talk from the coolest crafters on the planet. Are you a creative type? Craft your own costume. Upload evidence of the awesomeness at Minecraft.net. Then submit. The best costumes will feature in the show. Are you the chatty and opinionated type? Send us your ideas for panels. 
Lydia Winters will be joined by some amazing community co-hosts. We'll announce them soon. And game updates. We'll be revealing what's coming to the game live on air. Learn the secrets before anyone else. So tune in for the future of Minecraft and more. Minecon Earth 2018 livestream, September 29th. Welcome back. The Xbox Back Compat News is out, and of course the community is reacting. So let's take a quick look. Alex, you know I'm a fan. I'm a fan of gifts. I love my gifts. And I got to say this one here, Xbox for Life, just totally encompasses I'm with you. how I think a lot of people feel right <laughs> I did, now. I did the same thing. I know, she wiped her tears, for real. That it really is. happened, that really happened. I did have tears. What stuck out to you? Um, how can you not love Conquer? Conquer reminds me a lot of you. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna take that in the nice way. <laughs> that is a compliment, that is an absolute compliment. You know what, you know which one feels good as well, especially yep. since given what we're talking about today, Juarez is excited, I mean really, Everybody's excited. I'm Everybody, excited. I'm excited. Like, we're leaving work after this, and uh, uh, some things are yeah. gonna change. Some things are absolutely <laughs> gonna change. Long story short, you guys are all, all excited, so thank you for being a part of the show and messaging us at that hashtag. Of course, inside Xbox, we're going to send everyone whose comments we just read aloud a code for the new ID at Xbox game, Surviving Mars. Now, be sure to follow at Xbox on Twitter so we can send your code after the show. Sixteen years ago, this actor's peak performance helped define an icon. Sam Fisher, Splinter Cell, stealthy spy master of withering one-liners. And I am unreasonably excited to say that actor and, let's be honest, total legend Michael Ironside joins us to discuss Sam's unexpected team-up with the ghosts in Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Michael, how are you? I'm just sort of like in awe of that introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. No, it's Thank true. you very much. Well, welcome to the studio. We're so thrilled to have you here at Inside Xbox. Good to be here. So how was it stepping back into Sam Fisher's shoes? I never left. <laughs> I am Sam Fisher. <laughs> Quite right. You know what I mean? It's, um, what's interesting is, is uh, getting to introduce this character again to a whole new generation. There's a lot of people who have not pl played the earlier games because the platforms are no longer there. They're, it's like people have never ridden camels because they're no longer there. <laughs> um, so it's like introducing this character to a whole new generation. Yeah. And hopefully somebody with a, an essential center truth about him. It must be great to, I mean, the fans know your voice as the voice of Sam Fisher. It must be nice to have that tie to the character, right? It is. I've, I don't know how many times I've told this story, but one of the first times that... Uh, I was flying to Europe after the first or second game, I think it was, and I ordered a cup of tea on in, in the airplane, and all of a sudden I heard this, Sam. <laughs> and I turned around and I went, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm Michael Ironside. And he said, Sam Fisher. And there was this man standing in his vest and his tie was undone, uh, fairly business looking fellow. And I said, oh yeah, I guess, I, yeah, I am Sam Fisher. And he, he started to cry, he got emotional. And he said, I want to thank you for, for finding a way for me to communicate with my son. Yeah, and uh, that was one of the first times I realized about the social kind of ethical implications of these games and stuff and how it affects people and their relationships. Yeah. It was a wonderful endorsement. What, cool. what makes Sam Fisher special to you? I mean, you have played countless characters over the years on television and films, and, and, and what, what makes Sam special to you? It, it's, it's an interesting question because Games have evolved so much over the last 20 years, you know. Excuse me, when I was first approached about, about this character, it was about, I think, 18, 19 years ago. And I turned it down because I thought the, the technology and all these stuff was in the storylines, but the actual characters weren't. They, Sam was this very kind of one-line, uh, two-dimensional character, and I kept turning it down. They said, why? And I said, because there's no organics to him. There's mm -hmm. no organic. And we... And Ubisoft was good enough. I was actually shooting something in Montreal at the time, uh, a miniseries, and we sat down and started rewriting and trying to create what is the base. And they didn't understand, being the techno droids that they are, why you need a storyline for something that's not in the game mm -hmm. and a moral, a moral, ethical base that goes before the game started. So we created a backstory for him, created a family, what happened to the family. Mm -hmm. You know, why he is who he is and where he goes and what he does, what he does, and who he trusts and who he doesn't trust. And that stayed true all these years for the game. And I think that's why people identify with Sam. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now, games have moved on. Now, you know, maybe the last two games, Sam comes across as being a little more the last few games. But the early games, he really did have an emotional base. And if you go back through all the games, there's a through line for that mm. organics. Nice. You you really are Sam Fisher then. You're right. I, mean, <laughs> I am. I'm Sam Fisher. So. Well, you've been intimately acquainted with this character for, for 16 years now, right? 16. Actually, it's more than that because we started building the game a couple of years before that. Right. Sure. Okay. So yeah. how was the, the process of actually being involved with the game and, and recording the lines and learning about the character and, and taking the character on that arc over those 16 or plus it's, years? Well, it's what I do for a living. It's, uh, I think I've got about 300 features or something like that. Uh, the base of Sam was a character I met at a party back in the early 70s. I went to a wedding. Um, i got to be careful here. It was, a, <laughs> it was a Ukrainian wedding, and I was going because I was going to be this defrocked priest who had left the ministry because he fell in love with a nun, and I was curious to meet this guy. And it was that's, like, that's a movie into itself. <laughs> 72 and 73, and I was at, I was at this, this party, and there was a fellow there over near the the whole of chain, the, the cabbage rolls and the pet hay and all the good food. And, uh, and the air around him was kind of cold. I thought, ah, there's the defrock priest. And I went over, I said, so you fell in love with a nun and uh, left the priesthood. And this guy turned to me and said, well, what are you talking about? And the air around him was absolutely cold. He turned out he was a mercenary who was in town, uh, connected to this family, but he was in town for the death of his grandmother. And he was in those days, running shotgun as a mercenary for the, these flights in and out of the Congo. Wow. And, of course, being in my budding early ages of my acting, I started in 1970, I hung on this guy like a fly all day asking him questions. And what I got from him was an essential loneliness, an essential emptiness. Uh, we were talking earlier about it. I said, you ever been into an apartment where you're walking where somebody's living and they haven't really moved in? Mm -hmm and you talk and there's a bit of an echo comes back. Mm -hmm. That was the sense I got from him. When you talked to him or he talked, there was this slight emptiness about him that he's desperately, desperately aware of. And that's been the base of a lot of characters, and especially Sam Fisher, is that person who's looking for something to organically fill him or to make him feel whole again. And he has a very specific moral ethical principle behind that. Whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, is not the, the issue but it's organically correct. Mm -hmm. so, so you really have been holding on to that character when you met him in the in the early 70s for pro like almost 20, 25 years until you were able to really bring him out in Sam. Well, that character I met at that, that wedding reception um, in front of the whole of G, uh <laughs> has been the base for a lot of characters I've played. Uh -huh. It's almost like the canvas. Yeah. Painting a picture, we were talking earlier again, we're, uh, painting a picture doesn't start by choosing the colors and the landscape. It actually cut, starts when you, you build your stretcher, when you stretch the canvas, when mm -hmm. you choose the format and the, and the you know, that you're going to paint. And it's the same with characters. It's, mm -hmm. uh, that character is like the canvas that I've painted a lot of pictures yeah. on. Is that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, Absolutely. he's been your foundation. Sam, Sam owns his genetics to that meeting that yeah. day. He is not that person. Right. Do you think he knows that person? Do you think he might have seen Sam I can't Fisher really talk about that. I actually saw him. All right. He's still alive uh, in, a, in a news situation a couple of years back, and it shocked me because he's a couple of years older than me, and uh, I thought he'd be dead by now. Mm. And he's not. He's still out there. Just like Sam Fisher. Right. Well, I don't know if he's like Sam Fisher. I like to, I like to believe that Sam has a moral ethical base yeah. that is a little more correct. It's a little more loving. It's mm -hmm. a little more familial based. He believes in what he's doing and he wants to be, he wants it to be a better and safer world. Sure. Now, you know movies and TV inside out, right? That's been your, your life. It's my medium. How important do you think voice acting is in video games, which clearly visually is a, a very different medium? Boy, do you really want to ask me that question? That's kind of like a grenade. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't see essentially anything different in voice acting, camera acting, stage acting. There's an organic base and a truth to something. And, you, you know, how you people that put together that, that format use it uh, is different. I mean, I'm essentially the same if I'm doing um, narration on a documentary or if whether I'm doing a stage play or whether I'm doing a feature film. It all has to be organically correct. For me, this is for me. And uh, I think the more organically correct a character is, the more an audience feels safe in trusting them and allowing them to be told a story, or allowing them to be, drop their armor and let them be told a story. 
Michael, I was looking uh, before we before we came out here. I was looking on your IMDb page of all you talked about all the movies you've done, and it's a lot. What do you have coming up in the future? Um, what have I got? There's a film out there called Knuckleball. We shot last year. It's making its circuit around the uh, the festivals and stuff like that. Uh, What's the TNT series that I did? I can never remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing J.P. Morgan in it. Uh, it just finished its TNT run. It's going on to Showtime and uh, out there. Uh, the Alienist. Mm -hmm. uh, the Alienist. Oh, nice, yeah. It's uh, quite a wonderful show. Uh, wonderful actors and incredibly good writing. Oh, um, so in video games again? Video games? Uh, we have this and... Uh, Let's see. Let's see if the stories stay correct. Let's see if the storylines allow an organic presence like Sam back. Great. I know I would like to see him. Absolutely. Anyway, Michael, it's such a pleasure to have you on the set. Thank you for the voice. Thank you for everything. Yeah. A, well, thank you. Such a legend for your time. Anyway, thanks so much. Next, we have Laura Cordry from Ubisoft is here to help unpack this expansion and give us a taste of what lies ahead in Ghost Recon Wildland year two. But first, let's set the stage with the sizzling year two trailer. When somebody steals from Langley, it makes the brass sweat. That's when they call me. I'm the guy that goes where others can't. I'm the guy that will cross that line. I'm the guy that can disavow and leave the dead. And I'm the guy who solves their problems with swift action. I followed my target to Bolivia. He plans on selling Langley's secrets to the Santa Blanca drug cartel. I'm alone without my team. Lucky for me, some old friends are in the neighborhood. All right, Ghost, this is Sam Fisher. Let's go for a ride. We're here with Laura Cordry. Laura, you are the community dev, right? You work on the uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands team. That was uh, that was an incredible trailer, and I love your style here because you guys announced it on Monday, shipped it on Tuesday. It's available now, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, available now, that so is... everyone can go uh, check out all the new content. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Laura, what was the team's reaction when they heard they were going to be putting Sam Fisher yeah. into the Wildlands? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, as I'm sure you can imagine, the teams were so excited to bring such an iconic character uh, to the Wildlands. And additionally, just the opportunity that it gave us to create so much new content for our players. Obviously, we have this free PvE mission. Additionally, it meant we could add in Sam Fisher's iconic night vision goggles into nice, the game. Yeah. We have a new PvP class called the Echelon, so all based in Splinter Cell. So, yeah, it's really cool to, you know, bring the Splinter Cell universe into the the world of Ghost Recon Wildlands, and yeah, it's an awesome project for sure. When you're when you're working on this project, I mean, Splinter Cell to fans, uh, you know, we just talked to Michael Ironside. You know, it's it's he's got legendary feel and gameplay, and Ghost Recon is a little bit different. So, how did you bring those two together so that they were still true to their own universes? 
So it's really, um, well, for us, what we want to do is a question of just ensuring that, you know, when our players, you know, they play alongside Sam in this mission, that they really felt like they were playing alongside the character that they've come to know and love. Mm -hmm. So to do that, it was very much a question of ensuring that his personality really shows through. Obviously, everyone, you know, he's very iconic. So, <laughs> you know, he's got a great sense of humour, uh, wit, you know, a high sense of duty. So it's just to make sure that via the dialogue and the interactions he has with the ghost that, you know, you really feel like you're playing, you know, alongside Sam. And then additionally, just with the mission itself, um, you know, being, you know, based on Splinter Cell, that it's a stealth mission, it's set mm -hmm. at night time. Um, so it was just a question of, um, you know, bringing the world of Splinter Cell, the mood of Splinter Cell into the Wildlands and just giving it that little Ghost Recon Wildlands touch. Is there a certain strategy that players should use in trying to complete the mission? Yes, so it's quite a tough mission. <laughs> so, <laughs> warning. Uh, yeah, definitely a warning. So um, what I say is obviously, you know, think and play as Sam would, you know, go step by step, take your time. And really importantly, something super simple, uh, just remember the tools you have at your disposal in the game that you actually use all the time. So um, for the beginning of the mission, um, you know, with the stealth infiltration, obviously you can use your drone to recon your area, know where your enemies are, and um, you have your night vision goggles as well. Um, additionally, you can uh, you can create diversions with your diversion grenades. You have the noisemaker function on your drone. And then um, for the fight sequence, you can um, get help from the rebels. You can drop mortar. So there's really a lot you can do. And if you're finding it difficult to play solo, you can play in co-op as well. So you oh. can play with your friends. So nice. a lot of options there. So it's about remembering all the fundamentals that you've already learned playing Wildlands yeah. and, and fighting the cartel and exactly. net action as well. And You've got this incredible power up of Sam Fisher on your side. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a pretty good partner. So <laughs> I can't wait to hear some of the the dialogue between the ghosts. And no, it's, Sam. it's there must very be some cool. Good moments in there, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> nice. But this is, I mean, this is just one part of this huge update yeah. and the start of year two for Ghost Recon. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the other things in the update now and then what's coming up down the line. So, uh, so yeah, the first update of year two to Special Operation One. And so for PVE, so we have this free mission that we've been talking about today. Uh, additionally, um, we have a new community requested feature, which is AI teammate customization. And um, so very happy to bring this to our players. And it basically means that you can um, just change the outfits of your teammates in uh, nice. PVE, in our campaign mode. That's great. So yeah, that's, that's cool. And then, uh, so in PVP, we have a new mode called Sabotage. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that one team needs to capture and hold an objective before the timer runs out and the opposing team uh, tries to stop them. And then we have a new PvP assault class called the Echelon, he's super cool. And uh, so he comes with a sonar pulse ability and he can actually see enemies through walls uh, at a short range distance and has proximity mines, the SC4000 uh, assault rifle. And additionally, um, as it's the first update of year two, we have our year two pass, which is available now. So uh, basically Great. this unlocks all Ghost War classes a week early with each update and it has a special customization pack in it. Lots of Splinter Cell um, inspired uh, items in there. So cool. yeah, quite a lot for the first update. <laughs> you know, I know this is, for, this, is the, um, this is the second year, but let's quick look back at year one. What were some of the highlights for Ghost Recon Wildlands? So we actually had 13 uh, title updates last year. So wow. it was yeah, a jam packed year. And then, so during that time, we actually had a, so we had two DLCs. Um, we have our PVP mode, Ghost War. Um, we had additional PVE experiences, such as uh, the tier one mode in our campaign, uh, the Predator mission. Predator mission. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, that, that was Thank very you cool. For that. <laughs> yeah, pretty, that was a pretty tough mission yeah. as well. We have a habit of doing that. So, <laughs> so uh, that was what last was the stat that only like four percent or six, five or six percent of yeah, people yeah, actually think about, yeah, like defeated yeah. the Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Single yeah. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he seriously, seriously tough to take down, so. And that's still available now. Predator. Wants yeah. To take <laughs> Go back and it's there for you. Nice. And can you give us uh, any hints about what's coming up maybe later in year two? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have four title updates uh, for year two. So this is the first uh, of the four. Um, and each one, like with this update, we're going to have a very strong central theme upon which we'll build uh, PvE and PvP content. Uh, we'll continue to add uh, community requested features, of course, and additionally just make sure the game's running uh, as smoothly as possible. And um, to start the year right, we're holding a free weekend this weekend. Nice, yeah. On the 12th to the 15th of April, so everybody's welcome. What are you waiting for? Go. Brilliant. No well, that's this take... weekend. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, so play the game free. Try out the Sam Fisher mission and enjoy the rest of Ghost Recon this weekend. And go, weekend, go right? find the Predator afterwards if you Yeah, exactly. Like if you're still up to it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah right. definitely. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Laura. That's awesome. Thank you. So there you go. Ghost Recon Wildlands Year 2 is already looking like a wild ride straight out of the gate. But I want to know what you think. So, Rukari and Alex, what's the sit rep with the community over there? Well, thanks a bunch, Graham. Thank you so much. Well, I got to say, first of all, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a fan of GIFs, which is actually pronounced GIF, and I'm throwing the will oh, who said no. that about me earlier. We won't start uh, that fight today. But I gotta pick this one right here from Jake's, just because first, this happened in Seattle, and this is what you look like when you get ready for the show every time. <laughs> That's how I feel about seeing what just took place on stage I, I, here. I, I thought we were friends. We were, we absolutely were. You know what, and that's why I had to pick uh, this one. Speaking of- Nerdless games, huh? Yeah, yeah, because this is how I like to smile at you. <laughs> to be fair, you were doing that the entire time we watched that interview take place. Oh, should we do one or two more? That's absolutely Yeah, yeah, yeah I think We've it's got stuff time. to give out. All right. Yeah. This one holds a special place in my heart just because I got a chance to meet you. You have dude, a heart. But, yeah, one, of, one of many. Sam Fisher is oh. back. Can you do the woo? You can't do the woo. I it's can't okay. Do the we'll woo. save. We'll save from the woo. <laughs> Give me one more, Alex. You got one more? All right. Yeah, I think I got one more. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're gonna stick. This with, is a good one. We're gonna keep it wholesome. Gifts. Wholesome. Wholesome. Oh, Alex is a new Alex that I'm not used to. <laughs> Don't get used to it either. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, all right. Well, thank you everybody for sending in all of your fantastic screenshots. We really enjoy them. And guess what? For those of you who sent in your comments that we featured, we're gonna send you a one-month subscription to Xbox Game Pass. So be sure to follow at Xbox on Twitter so we can send you your code after the show. Coming up, Larry takes us on a deep dive through the Xbox Spring update. Jeff and Graham highlight this month in Game Pass, including an interview with the developers behind RoboCraft Infinity, plus overkills The Walking Dead and Xbox Fan Fest news for E3. But first, let's sneak a peek at some magic moments from PAX East, including a chat with Brendan Green from Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and EDM legend Dead Mouse. And when we get back, we've got some exciting news for any Xbox fan who's been tempted to try out the PVP phenomenon. This one year Xbox Game Pass. Uh, pretty psyched about it. Pax is awesome so far and uh, love Sea of Thieves. I don't care if he has a ghillie suit. The ghillie suit will be mine at the end of the day. <laughs> See you later. Joel Zimmerman, aka Dead Mouse! You know, we needed like a level four mouse head with. Frying pans for ears. Right. I mean, yeah. you, got, you got a kill right off the bat. <laughs> it was great. Yeah! <laughs> Ooh, yeah! yeah! Hey, it's Larry here of Xbox Live. Major Nelson here. Pack season Boston. Just got off stage with these two guys, Dead Mouse and Brandon. We're talking about. PUBG, Dead Mouse, great to see. Let's talk about this crazy helmet. Oh, this? Yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, we, we've done a number of collaborations with uh, Xbox and Heads and stuff. Uh, so uh, we only deemed it necessary. I said, uh, you know, we needed like a level four mouse head with frying pans for ears. Right. And uh, we just sent them the kind of assets and said, okay, here's the mouse head, here's the level three helmet, marry them. With with the Xbox, with the logos yeah, in yeah, here, with and the, the eyes. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Yeah, it's this, this came out perfect. You play a lot of the game, don't you? A ton. Why why do you play a lot of the game? What, what do you think attracts uh, so many people to it? I think I, I think you know it's it's 50-50 gameplay <laughs> and the kind of social interaction that yeah. you can you know jump in a game with some buds and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that and get good or you know just have some lulls and yeah make some crazy shots and clips and it's stuff. It's also you know the pacing of the game because it's it's like 90% just quiet and creeping around, and then the 10% of it, it's just, it kind of it kind of gets crazy at the end there. It's the game, it's whatever you want to make of the game. Basically, yeah. We had a chance to play out on stage here in front of about 3,000 people in the house, and, and many more watching online. That must have been crazy, because you you play the first, yeah, first yeah, the, with the helmet the on. The pressure was real, yeah, and uh, you know, the helmet's a little distracting, and you can't hear anything, and right. you kind of see things on the monitor. I remember like a couple times having to get up close to. But you did, I mean, you, yeah. got, you got a kill right off the bat. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was good. My, my first Xbox PUBG kill. And, and Brendan, you had a chance to kind of talk about 
the games and game preview, you're still, I mean, you're continuing. The teams continue to make exactly. updates and, and tell us about that. Yeah, no, like we're up to, I think, patch 12 now on Xbox. You know, it's in certification. We have Miramar coming um, in uh, May. And, you know, we're just continually upgrading, continually improving the experience. And I'm working with the community. You know, we've got a really strong and passionate community. Right. I think it's over 5 million now and, yeah. and really, you know, getting their feedback and being able to apply that to the game with the help of uh, at the Xbox team has been great. Being really well received here at PAX. I mean, we planned it on the show floor. We had a ton of people coming up excited about seeing you two guys play. So I just want to thank you on behalf of Xbox. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your time and, uh, and, and all the great work you guys are doing. So thanks so much. Thanks so much, Larry. Sweet. It's always fun to see Player Unknown himself at Dead Mouse was a trip in person. Now at PAX East, we just announced that the new desert map Miramar will be out on Xbox in May. And we've got great news for any Xbox fan that's been hoping to try before they buy. Check it out. That's right, if you've been on the fence with PUBG, now is the time to take the plunge risk-free on Xbox One. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds will be part of Xbox Live Gold Free Play Days beginning Thursday, April 19th through Sunday, April 22nd. Now, at any time during that event, you can download PUBG just by clicking on the gold member area right there on the dashboard or search for it like you always do on the Microsoft Store. Now, if you decide to purchase PUBG at any point after the free play days, a smart move, every battle point you earn will carry over seamlessly to the full game. Now, in addition to free play days, the team is also dropping the PUBG 5 pack. Now, that includes a t-shirt, pants, a beanie, and shoes, although I understand if you want to go barefoot, so you'll be styling when you smack that final player with a frying pan. The new pack will only be available from April 19th to May 19th. Still ahead, Graham and I will explore what's popping up on Xbox Game Pass, including an interview with developer Free Jam Games on the top five things you need to know about Robocraft Infinity. Plus, a haunting reveal for Overkill's The Walking Dead and get the jump on Xbox Fan Fest at E3 2018. I can't believe it's just two months away. Now, before that, we've got another hot basket of delicious for you with the Xbox Spring Update, which the team is working hard to deliver in the coming weeks. Major Nelson, now you know he is going to serve up that tasty education, that's a thing, trust me, with this complete walkthrough. The latest feature-packed update to Xbox One is here. Xbox One X and Xbox One S now support a 2560 by 1440 resolution for games and media. This feature should be especially appealing to Xbox One owners who use a 1440p display for PC gaming. With over a million and a half more pixels than 1080p, this resolution fills the gap between Full HD and 4K displays. But that's not all. We also added an option to turn on AMD Radeon FreeSync for supported TVs and monitors. FreeSync is a form of variable refresh rate, which helps to reduce input latency and minimize display stuttering. The entire Xbox One family of devices will work with FreeSync certified displays. Xbox One S and Xbox One X will also support high dynamic range with FreeSync 2. Auto low latency mode enables your Xbox One to notify your display when you're playing a game. So a TV that also supports ALLM will know to switch to its low latency video mode. Many TVs and monitors refer to low latency mode as game mode. All of these options can be turned on by navigating to your settings menu, selecting display and sound, then video output. Please note that you'll only be able to turn on these settings if your TV or monitor supports them. We've now made broadcasting the mixer even easier. You can start it from anywhere on Xbox One. If you decide to switch a game or exit to the dashboard, your viewers will see a pause screen until you jump back into a game. You will also see a pause indicator on your broadcast overlay. This month, we're also introducing a new form of Mixer interactivity with the Share Controller feature. Mixer streamers on Xbox One can now share control of their game with a viewer on Mixer.com. 
Just turn on the share controller switch from the broadcast pane in your guide, and your viewers will be able to share control through an on-screen gamepad in their web browser or by plugging in a controller into their PC. In addition, you can now share captured screenshots and clips directly to Twitter from the broadcast and capture tab of the guide. Captures will display and play directly in your Twitter feed instead of showing up as a link. We'll even help you get your media discovered by suggesting hashtags for the title of the game. Preview Insider members have had this for a while, but now everyone can choose to switch between light and dark themes based on time of day. You can personalize your theme to automatically switch based on sunrise and sunset in your specific location. We've also introduced a new high contrast option for light theme, which makes on-screen elements easier to see. Based on customer feedback, we're adding narrator volume controls that are independent from system audio volume. Additionally, we're adding an input learning mode. So for every button you press on an attached input device, Xbox One will say the name of that button and its function. High contrast light theme and narrator options can both be adjusted in the ease of access menu in settings. The Microsoft Edge browser on Xbox One has been updated to a more modern look and feel. Improvements to the favorites and history experience make it simple for you to get back to your favorite sites. Other new features include tab muting, read aloud, and autofill. You can also now download and upload music, pictures, and videos from Microsoft Edge on Xbox One. Your downloaded content can then be browsed with the File Explorer app. Tournaments are now available directly in GameHub, so you don't have to be a member of a club to start a tournament. Simply open the GameHub for a game that supports tournaments. In the Multiplayer tab, select Community Tournaments from the menu on the left-hand side. Here, you can select the option to Create Tournament. Club administrators can now filter invitation requests based on various criteria, including reputation, gamer score, and recommendations from existing club members. These filters will persist until the administrator changes them, so if you set up or edit club filters, they'll still be there the next time you sign on. Speaking of clubs, you can now sort your club feed to show you what's new, what's hot, or top posts. You can now also disable comments on your own feed posts across clubs, game hubs, and community. If you love to rock out to a music playlist while playing your favorite games, then we have good news for you. You can now selectively balance game audio against background music within the guide. Simply navigate down to the app that is playing background music in the guide. Press A to open a new flyout with additional music controls, including a new balance slider that will allow you to prioritize game volume or background music volume. The audio goodness doesn't stop there though. System sounds on home and in the guide have been completely revamped to support spatial audio. Now, the audio cues from your surround sound system will match the actions you see on screen. In addition to all these new features, a subset of users may also see additional experimental features that we did not mention here. These features are only enabled for a portion of the Xbox audience to gauge interest and collect feedback. Many of our Xbox insiders have already had the chance to play with these experiments. If you would like to join them, getting started as an Xbox insider is easy. Just download the Xbox Insider Hub app on your Xbox One or Windows 10 PC. Thanks for watching. Well, there you go. That's an incredibly thorough look at the Xbox Spring update, which is coming soon. What about that, Jeff? It was, it was quite thorough. Good stuff, eh? Right, I've got three words for you, mate. Mm. Build, drive, and fight. No, it's not my daily commute to work, although it does get pretty rowdy around here. But those three words describe the core of Robocraft Infinity. But there's a lot more happening under the hood of Free Jam's creative Robo Combat game. Now, it actually launches tomorrow on both Xbox Game Pass and the Microsoft Store. Now, Graham and, I'll be, Graham and I will be right back with a uh, full rundown of this month's Xbox Game Pass titles. But first, let's chuck off the top five things that you need to know about Robocraft Infinity.
Robocraft Infinity is really that childhood dream of being able to build Legos, take them into a battle and fight them with other people, except instead of your imagination, you get to do that online. We've got hundreds of parts, um, movement types, weapons that you can put together with a bunch of different building cubes and um, just create these really amazing robots online that you can then take into battle and, and really prove your stuff with uh, other players. So the origin story for Robocraft really comes with our CEO. Um, five or six years ago, he was playing Minecraft, obviously a big fan of um, any UGC kind of product, has also studied physics at university, and really wanted to find a way to bring a game which offers the whole building aspect and freedom that uh, Minecraft offered, as well as including some of those physics aspects. I loved playing around with the physics simulation tools you find in game engines, springs, hinges, rigid bodies, those types of things. And the blocks gave us a way to take the complexities of a physics engine and, and allow anybody to build. What interested us about user-generated content was we could create platforms which would allow players to make our games much bigger than a development team could ever make on their own. So he created a demo for Robocraft and showed some of his friends who worked at a studio with him and they decided they loved it and left the studio and started up their own company to kind of create it. And then we introduced it as a prototype with the community and the community helped us shape it and together with the community we've built what we have today. For new users coming to Robocraft, I would give a number of tips. If you're really uninterested in building, but you really want to try someone else's creations, you can use some of the initial starter bots we give you, earn some money in-game, and then take it to our in-game store, which other people can upload their robots to. The robot factory, which allows players to upload robots that they find are good and share them with the community. So if you're struggling for inspiration, you can go to the factory, download one, and that'll help you get into the game too. Otherwise, we do have features for people who like to build themselves. So we have the body builder feature, which helps build a general guided um, plain body of the robot that you'd like to build. So cars, tanks, mechs, and uh, basically creates them for you. Uh, you choose the front of your robot and then the back of your robot. Then you take it in and customize it yourself, decorate it, put wheels or tank tracks on it, put weapons on it, and then you can take it straight into battle then. And the big thing in Robocraft is just to build, test, build, test, and just enjoy that process. Take it into battle. It doesn't matter if you do badly, just iterate. Uh, we wanted a, a chance to uh, create Robocraft how we always wanted. On the PC, we've been uh, iterating for years and years and years. So we wanted a fresh start and reimagine the game. Remaster it, to polish it, to improve the balance, to allow people to create bigger, more creative robots uh, to allow a lot more creative freedom and obviously to make it all work in a polished package for the Microsoft console. Xbox really is an indie friendly platform so when it, it came down to a choice of what to choose from I think going to Xbox as our first console made sense and the idea Xbox team has been fantastic as well and has really helped us kind of push the game to be what console players would expect. This is like a a, a rebirth of our, our best love. The community has always led our decision making and the things we've added and the way we've shaped the game. And Game Pass was a great opportunity to just bring Robocraft to a much bigger community. I mean, you've got hundreds of thousands, if not more, players who are looking for extra titles that they want to play, and they really get that opportunity in Games Pass. To be able to then feed off of those community to help us shape and improve the game on the Xbox, so that was a great opportunity for us. My favourite robots and the craziest robots I've seen are things that people have come up with on their own. So you can uh, imitate other things, so you can create Master Chief, for example, or some other franchise characters, but the best ones are, are things you come up with yourself. So uh, the crazy ostrich with a, a top hat and a monocle. My favorite one would have to be one that was created by a community member called Cluley. It's called the Cluley Ball. Um, sounds kind of boring, but it was actually just this 
a flying armored sphere full of guns that uh, really wrecked face in game. Funnily enough, he now works for us uh, as a designer on Robocraft, so definitely created something that impressed us. I'd like to see people really go out there, build something unique, and then share it with the community. And um, we've got a hub that people can go in and post pictures of, and you know we'll be doing competitions as well. So you know, really let your uh, creative juices flow. Have fun with it. Go crazy. Build something mad and wonderful and beautiful, uh, and I think you'll have a good time. Graham, I'm really glad that's coming to Game Pass. First person you can make yeah, even buzzing. yeah anybody. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> We've got another day. Uh, first person you can make even like a passable diva mech. Like tweet it at me. I want to see it. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. That, that, that was a great piece. Like I love seeing the variety of things you can build. Like there was a dinosaur running around in there, and then the ostrich with the top hat. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. That's gonna be a lot of fun to play with. I yeah, and, so. and available tomorrow. Uh, from the Microsoft Store, or if you subscribe to Game Pass, you're going to be able to play it then. Hey, so that's great. Let's talk more about Xbox Game Pass for April. But before we lift off the newest titles, Jeff, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to explain to everyone what Xbox Game Pass is. Already? Go! Uh, Larry gets a minute and a retractable you're wasting mic. Time, and I get mate. You're wasting Look, time. How much would you pay to have access to over 100? It's almost 150 <laughs> games. 50 bucks, $1,000. Probably $9.99. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's what it costs. I think the best part about it is, like, let's say next month, um, I'm over 10 seconds, State of Decay 2 <laughs> is coming directly into it. Uh, you can play State of Decay if you haven't played it. Your One Survival Edition, play it now. It's part of Game Pass. That's right. So it's $9.99 a month, $7.99 if you're over in, in um, the UK. You get access to all those games. And we've got all these new titles that just landed this month as well. Robocraft Infinity coming tomorrow, but also City Skylines we talked about on the last episode. Watched of... last week's or last month's episode yeah. for lots of tips there. So I'm a huge Huge fan of this game, great for drinking tea with, great strategic builder. There's also The Hunter, Call of the Wild. This is a nice looking game. I'm told it looks absolutely incredible uh, on Xbox One X. Yeah, animals look so Free world nice. hunting wanna, simulation, so them. really yeah. cool. I'm just gonna look at them. And there's more. Kingdom New Lands. I was just playing this last week. Tell it's me. It's great. Um, uh, Side-scrolling, really beautiful 8-bit uh, um, aesthetic style, really simple but really strategic and it's great. And Here, Portal Knights is on screen. Yeah, it's a good uh, a good fun one. Um, there's the construction part, but then actually it was pretty fun to battle. I think it's a good game to um, really, like a more action-oriented sort of building game. That's right. Next up is uh, Cluster Truck. What was that? Cluster Truck. Good, good enunciation. Thank you. Yeah, it's an infinite runner um, on the back of a bunch of trucks. Which must We've have been an interesting uh, pitch. Yeah. I, it looks, <laughs> hey, look, it's part of Game Pass. Try it out. Let it's us know what fun. you think. That's what it's all about. We there also have Sacred Citadel and uh, Late Shift. Now, Late is... Shift, I haven't tried this, but I'm really interested in it. So it's, it's developed by a, a development team based in Wales mm -hmm. over in the UK. Uh, full motion video. It's I was like going to say, a, the graphics look phenomenal. Experience. Yeah, incredible. And you're making the choices as the uh, the movie moves along. So, yeah, yeah, that was like really a big genre back back in the 90s, no, in the but days. they look a lot better now. Yeah, absolutely. All right, anyway. So there you go. And you know, we actually have a bit of a bonus announcement, which I only found out about about 10 seconds ago. We can confirm that Bomberman Live Battle Fest will join nice. Game Pass next not next month, next Monday, April 16th. We can we can add games whenever we want. That's we don't great. have to wait till the end of the month. Bomberman, happy, happy memories. Always good Bomberman, I heard someone on a yeah. podcast say this recently and it really resonated with me. It's like the original Battle Royale. That's a very good point. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, dropping bombs, taking people out. I had a lot of fun playing that. Well, one. and in just another week, you're going to get to play this one. There you go. So that's Xbox Game Pass for you. Uh, and don't forget about the Xbox Game Pass Quest. Or a 24 karat gold Xbox One Ooh. X, I'm not making that up, is currently up for grabs. Uh, all you need to do is earn one achievement in any Xbox Game Pass game during this month, and you can enter to win. Can we, uh, can we cue Larry's white glove treatment from the last show, please? I'd love to see that again. Oh, there we there go. Oh, look at that. Look how young we look. Uh, <laughs> look at those white gloves. Do you know what? Remember Larry gave me a pair of those white gloves. I took them home afterwards and my wife was very confused. You're just going around <laughs> dusting all of the consoles, anything shiny. Very uh, good. But the one achievement per game, that seems like a, a pretty easy quest to, to be able to Absolutely. take care of. You can do that. Totally. You can, I'm actually playing Portal Knights for 45 seconds or for about five minutes. I got 45 gamers That's scores, my kind so of game. You like can do it. that, yeah. Let's do it. Enter it. Get that. Well, we can't enter, but I want that gold Xbox. <laughs> anyway, if you had, uh, so it's pretty easy to complete. If you'd like to review the full list of this month's available games on Xbox Game Pass, just follow Xbox Wire. That's news.xbox.com or xbox.com forward slash Game Pass. All right, and of course, last month, Sea of Thieves marked the first Microsoft Studios game that launched day and date on Xbox Game Pass. 
Uh, now, launch for Sea of Thieves was a sight to behold with celebrations all around the world, including this memorable underwater treasure hunt. Zum Spielstart von Sea of Thieves haben wir einige tapfere Piraten eingeladen und sie mussten einen Schatz bergen. Das heißt, sie haben am Anfang ein Rätsel bekommen und mussten in-game tatsächlich im Spiel sich zusammentrommeln und dort mit den Schiffern eine Insel ansteuern und das erste Rätsel lösen, das sie dann hier nach Malta gebracht hat. Malta? Malta! Malta, Malta jawohl! Oh, oh, oh. Das heißt, also Malta liegt der Schatz begraben. Sehr, sehr, sehr geil. Wir stecken gerade irgendwie hier oben fest. Also für mich sieht das absolut danach aus, dass hier ein Hafen sein müsste. Ein alter Schatz liegt kalt und triest dort, wo die Sonne nie zu finden ist. Ruht seit Jahrzehnten vor der Küste. Ach, wenn man nur die Route wüsste. Ah. Am Hafen wartet die Lösung seit eh und je. Suche Legend und stecht den See. Da ist das Schiff. Guck's dir an, das ist doch legendary. So, wir haben jetzt herausgefunden, dass sich vier weitere Hinweise hier in der Nähe verbergen. Und mit in der Nähe meine ich unter Wasser. Schlüssel gefunden. Jawohl. Mal gucken, welche Kiste wir dann damit aufmachen. Ah. Ah. Dann haben wir dann immer noch nicht den Schatz gefunden. Danach haben wir festgestellt, wir müssen wieder dahin, wo wir gestartet sind. Danke Xbox auf jeden Fall nochmal für die geile Zeit hier auf Malta. Und jetzt checkt unsere Kanäle aus und da könnt ihr dieses fette Paket gewinnen mit unter anderem einer schönen Xbox auch noch dazu. Aber nicht die Kiste. Nicht die Kiste, nicht die, ja, die behalten wir natürlich, die Kanonen bleiben auch hier. <lacht> ja, aber ich glaube es lohnt sich trotzdem, also checkt auf jeden Fall alles aus. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und mach's gut. Ciao. 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 All right, well Alex. This is, my, this is my favorite part. This is where we get to check in and have all the fun up here at the, the kids' the desk. The social <laughs> the desk. The kids' desk. He's so, hey, let's do it. Let's see what people are saying. Oh, what's funny is this is legitimately the first time we're going through this. I just I just got to give this shout out right here to Francisco for the amazing. Uh, that's, those are all Xbox One X, or excuse me, Xbox One controllers. What a collection. Gears so Elite and the regular right Elite now, as well. Francisco, I'm proud of you. What else do we have? What else do we have? You find one. I mean, I think they figured out that we <laughs> love gifts. There's a trend. There's a trend here. There's some gifts. Um, Since we're giving stuff out, you pick a favorite. Come on. Okay. You got one. Oh, it's man, not that so hard. Many. There's too I many really, options. I really like Mr. Kogos. I, I, I feel like. You know what? I will say a lot of people that were in that theater were excited to see Player Unknown and Dead Mouse playing. And Dead Mouse had some, uh, some very fun moments. Very fun moment, I will say <laughs> that, that. That first kill was absolutely a good one. I know you've been waiting one. for this one. I know you've been waiting for this. Which juicy, one? I got a I... juicy nugget. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pick up this one here, and he's he's gonna get me for this one. But what better way to enjoy inside Xbox than with lots of Larry and that uh, Easter Sunday soup, right? It's beautiful. Absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. All right. Thank you, everybody. So keep those cards and letters coming to hashtag Inside Xbox. And you too maybe like these lucky people whose comments we just read that are going to get the ID at Xbox game, The Darwin Project. All right, since Overkill's The Walking Dead was first announced in 2014, the team has largely flown under the radar while crafting an ambitious co-op survival title. Well, now it looks like they're ready to come out swinging. Saul Gascon from Overkill's The Walking Dead will be with us in just a minute to get into the guts of the game. But first, uh, we think you better meet Maya. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you can check out the entire Maya trailer on youtube.com forward slash Xbox. But now I'm excited to be joined by Saul Gascon from Overkill's The Walking Dead. And we'll talk about Maya in just a second here, but first, what's Overkill's The Walking Dead all about? Overkill's The Walking Dead is an online co-op game in which, uh, you know, four people join forces to actually try to survive through Washington DC. Uh, you will need to fight your way through hordes and uh, human enemies and, uh, you know, try to make the day. Now, we just met Maya, but who is she, what is she all about, and how do the different characters play? In the Walking Dead universe, characters are the pillar for all the storytelling and everything that happens in the game. So what we've built here with uh, Robert is uh, very compelling characters that have a very deep backstory. And the idea is that then uh, when you jump into the game, you experience who these characters are through gameplay, right? So that's why, for instance, Maya, uh, who is a doctor, um, she, she, uh, her role in the group is to actually heal other players, right? So, you know, somebody goes down, she's gonna be there and fix that person, right? Uh, meanwhile, Aiden, in, in the other hand, he's more of a brawler that goes frontliner, uh, baseball bat, shotguns, and he's gonna make sure to do openings when crowds of zombies come in, right? So, this is very important for us. Characters are uh, the main core pillar uh, of the universe for for our game. Now, with all of those different character abilities, how does something like that affect co-op gameplay? We've built um, the whole game and all the characters around the concept of being a co-op experience, right? So players are gonna find situations in the levels that they need to resolve as a group. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be a door that is locked and they need to find a way to, to uh, open it, right? Sometimes it's gonna be more combat oriented in which uh, for instance, Aiden is gonna be more close to the enemies, while Maya is gonna always try to maintain a distance. She has a, a lower health bar, for instance. Um, the important thing here is that what we've built, what we are building, is a, a game in which everybody has his hero moment, right? And then, depending on the character that you choose, um, you have different roles that you excel at. You can still do everything, but there is characters that excel at specific uh, roles in, into the core gameplay experience. So what was it like when you and the team realized you would be working on a Walking Dead game? It's gotta be exciting, right? Well, that's a super good question. Actually, just for uh, you guys to understand how cool it is for us to work uh, with the team at Skybone and Robert Kirkman on, on The Walking Dead. Myself, uh, when I was speaking with the CEO of the company, Bo Anderson, about this game, um, I just packed everything I had and just took the first flight to Stockholm. That's how excited uh, we are about building this game. Well, I know I'm certainly excited to see gameplay, as are the fans, but the last question would be, when can fans expect to see more? Uh, we are at Overkill, we, are, uh, we live and die by gameplay, so we understand that people are really excited to see the game. We are really excited too, uh, so we will let you know when we're ready. Um, just thank you guys for, for the great interview and uh, all the time you spent with us. See you guys. All right, well, thank you so much, Saul, for joining us. We cannot wait to see more. Coming up next, Graham and Jeff will sit down with Chris Munson and reveal some of the very first details on Xbox Fan Fest at E3 2018. <laughs> Being at Xbox Fan Fest, it is so infectious and it is amazing and it is one of the best experiences in my life. I'm thinking like, what could be the next best experience in my life and I can't think of anything else. It's really uh, bigger than we have expected. <laughs> Starting to grow back. I got the Xbox symbol carved in before I went just to show a lot more support for the, the people that show me love. I was hyped all day. The way Xbox handled us, man, took us on the buses, bring us here, fed us, made sure we were taken care of, showed us this iconic stuff on screen. It's cool to get like a little sneak peek into what is gonna be coming out that year. It is truly about the fans. Everyone has a chance to get to it. My, my blood just feels like popping on my, 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 
holes in my face right now, bro. You have to go no matter what. It's so special. You made a dream come true, and it's it's something I'll, for, I'll remember for the rest of my life. Xbox Fan Fest at E3 has rapidly evolved into one of the hottest tickets of the week. Now, what started as a simple invite to the Xbox briefing has multiplied in all sorts of exclusive access and activities. And here to discuss the tsunami of fun that fans can expect at E3 2018 is Chris Munson, or as he's known online, it's the Xbox Fan Fest guy. Hello, how, how you, you doing? doing, Chris? Good, good. How are you? Good to have you here, mate. Thanks yeah, so. yeah. Good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you. So, Fan Fest, right there on the shirt. That's right. What is it? Well, as you know, FanFest is these multi-day experiences we throw all around the world. We're entering our fourth year. It'll be the fourth one we actually do at E3, and so we're here to actually talk about some really interesting information about FanFest. Fans have been really waiting for this information. Nice, and FanFest, I mean, it's one of, the, one of my favorite things of the year, right? It's when we, we get really up close and personal with our fans and have a great time at some of the biggest events of the year. Like, why is it important to Xbox? Well, you know, for us, it's always been about connecting with the fans around the world. So FanFest goes to the places all around the world where fans are. So we've yeah. been to Australia. We've been to Germany multiple times. Uh, we've gone down to Mexico multiple times as well. So it's, we've been on boats on the Rhine. We've done uh, drifting in, in Australia. So for these things, FanFest is a way by which we can connect with our fans better. Uh, and then we can also then hear from them and understand, hey, what's great about Xbox? Where do we go? How do we get even better going forward? I don't recall being invited to go drifting in Australia. No, I don't. I didn't get yeah, that one yeah, either, you can, fair, you can yeah. send invites to us. I'll send you the invite. I, I love seeing the fan passion all around the world. It's yep. like it's slightly different in every region and every continent around the world, but the one thing that's consistent is that those fans really love Xbox, right? Yes. Tell us about E3 2018, though. What's happening at FanFest this year? Yeah, so there's actually a couple different things that are happening for fans at E3 this year. So not only will we have our Xbox Fan Fest again, for so lucky 400 fans will get a chance to experience the multi-day experience that we typically do on um, both on Sunday and Monday. But now, for the very first time, we're bringing 1,000 fans to the briefing. Nice. So we have 1,000 tickets available for people to go and see the briefing live in person there on that Sunday. And we just feel like as we expand our fan love, these all kinds of things we really want to uh, bring to the fans and have them enjoy Xbox at E3 this year. Great. So that, that's more fans than we've ever had in an E3 Xbox yes. briefing before, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, it's a new venue, and I have to say, having been to the Microsoft Theater, it's fantastic. And if you ever get the chance, and this appears to be your chance, to go to an E3 briefing, of course, the Xbox briefing, phenomenal. I actually faked being yeah. a media person one year to get it, <laughs> and it was very much worth it. Worth it. It yeah. is amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a game-changing experience. It really is, yeah. It's, it's brilliant, yeah. Now, we're, um, we're charging people this year as well, right? So that's new, and it's a little bit different, but... Yeah. Tell us, talk us through like how that's going to work and where those pre sure. pre-seats so are going. Sure. So as we've thought about diff how we uh, diversify and do the various things with FanFest, so the briefing tickets themselves, zero charge, no charge at all. So for FanFest, there's a couple different things. One, the tickets now will cost $45, uh, but FanFest winners will be able to get a chance to get two tickets. Uh, so they'll be able to understand. Well, that's the first time. We've usually just done uh, one ticket, one person. Mm -hmm. But we're also looking to expand the, the uh, idea of FanFest. So FanFest is always is about paying it forward to the fans. Thank you for their loyalty, thank you for their passion, uh, thank you for just being gamers and enjoying everything on our platform. Now we want to be able to help the fans then pay it forward to others. And so we're going to be partnering with a key charity, uh, which we'll have a little bit more information in the near future. But we are wanting the fans to experience that same excitement, now taking it and giving it to somebody else. So we're very excited about that approach this year. Chris, how are, how are fans going to find out if they get those tickets? So both the FanFest tickets and the briefing tickets will be an online random draw this year. So so the ticketing site will open here uh, in the next couple days or so. Uh, we'll have a lot more to reveal that soon. Uh, and then they'll wait. We'll essentially wait uh, for all the submissions to come in. You check uh, which one you want. If you want both tickets, you can do that as well. And then randomly draw, press a button, and then we'll send out the emails to the lucky winners. So I think one of the, the, the experience of everything you get to do at E3 is a major part of FanFest. The yeah. other big part you're wearing is swag. And yeah. this, this is actually very nice. I'm going to need that. <laughs> what, what swag do you... It will wick away the very moisture direct. of Los Angeles. Very subtle. Well done. Right. And, uh, and but it's so, a dry heat. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, not, not always in June. Um, so what's, uh, what do you have prepared for the folks that are going to be going to E3 FanFest 2018? So the FanFest fans, and the ones who have attended in the years past know there's always a secret gear backpack. Yeah. So this year the backpack is returning. Yes, there is some secret gear in that, but I'm happy to reveal for the very first time two pieces 
that are actually going to be in that backpack. One, Jeff, you're right, is the jersey I'm wearing. Not the t-shirt, the jersey. So we have actually made jerseys, custom designed jerseys for each one of the fans going to the Fan Fest. Uh, so that will be one thing. Nice. The other thing is a custom edition. It's a Sea of Thieves edition, two terabyte Seagate hard drive, of which is going to be, is it right here? Here it is, here right here. Oh, thank nice. you, look at that. person for that. There, wow. Yes, it yes. is. So oh, every Fan Fest Very attendee cool. will be getting this Sea of Thieves version. Uh, has a lot of the goodies for Sea of Thieves. Of course, Sea of Thieves is our biggest blockbuster game right now. Um, and as Graham likes to point out, it glows, it glows in, in the, the dark. dark. That's the oh. only way you can make certain things like that better, isn't it? Right? Yeah, we've, Everything's we've better. We've all blundered in at night trying to find our hard drive. <laughs> yeah. That problem is solved. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is awesome. It's two terabytes, so it holds over 50 plus games. It does come with a bunch of Sea of Thieves items as well. A midnight blunder bus. Yeah, that's right. I that mean, is right. Thank you. It was on the tip it's of just your on the tip of my tongue. Uh, but this is the thing that we're both this and that are the two, only two so far, things that go into the FanFest gear backpack. So we're very excited for FanFest people and attendees and winners to get the get their hands on that and then we'll reveal a ton more uh when we get to e3 later this year excellent all right so where can people find out more information about fan fest in the coming weeks well uh we have uh something coming up here in the next couple of weeks stay mm -hmm. tuned for information either just follow hashtag xbox fan fest on twitter you can follow myself uh you can uh, on money rumble or you can follow a bunch of other channels how about which... xbox wire Let's yes start with the that xbox one. wire will be a great place as well as a lot of other social channels as well so uh stay tuned getting very very close wicked Chris, thank you very much. Those will be great shirts for yeah. my five-a-side team. So you, you being a soccer wanna... fan has finally paid off. Yeah. Yes, it finally has. The thought process has worked. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you so much. Really exciting about FanFest at E3 2018. It's always amazing to be there and catch up and chat with fans at the show. Right, Rukari, Alex, before we sign off for episode two, let's check in one more time with the community. Thanks, fellas. And Chris, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I know where you sit. I'm coming from one of those jerseys. <laughs> but we are just about wrapped up here, but we wanted to get just one more look at those highlights from the community. It's been a good day, right? Uh, how did Jeff put it? It's a hot basket of delicious. <laughs> and you guys absolutely appreciate what's going on here, and we appreciate your feedback. And look, we'll, we'll keep it simple now, right? It's all about having fun here, and the show keeps getting better. Love it. Great work from the backwards compatibility team. It's good to see that. Yeah, like, again, I, agree. I like I agree. the positive feedback. I, like I it. joke. But I still have fun. Speaking <laughs> of jokes, how would this get up here? <laughs> I, so I didn't, I didn't curate what? that one. I don't get anything. I don't I get anything for sorry. this. Yeah. But <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. This is, this is beautiful. I mean, this is really what it's all about, right? It you is. know, we, we take the feedback that everybody gave us from last show, and I'm specifically looking at you guys. Read it, and <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to figure out how we can make things better. I trolled them earlier, by the way, which is why I had to give that shout. One more? Should we do one more? Yes. And this is just. Uh, this is just how I feel today. Where is this one? Michael Ironside is an interesting character and just totally dropped some fun. He was an interesting character, and that story put it me really on the edge was. In, in, really the, in the greatest of ways, in the absolute greatest of ways. All right, and you know what, Rikari? I've got a few codes left over. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I got a few of these, please. All of, uh, all of you whose highlights we just showed are going to receive a code for the new ID at Xbox game, Owlboy. That's out today. So that does it for us. Graham, Jeff, Larry, what do we have coming up next month? Well, I can't believe we're almost ready to wrap it up here. I mean, what, what, a, what a day, right? Yeah, all what that a, By the way, I put the confidence show on your wear. It's so nice. It's, is that five? <laughs> I don't know. I'm defeated. I'm, I'm hype beast, Larry. Yeah, well, I never get, got to give uh, Chris his slick bit of kiss, so right. I'm upset about that. But meeting Michael Ironside was absolutely incredible. I mean, like, I grew up with his movies, like Top Gun. Like seeing him in Top Gun and then sitting next to him Total in life was like, recall, incredible. Remember? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. What a great show. Now, if you need your Xbox News fix up to the minute, you can always follow us on Xbox Wire at news.xbox.com, Xbox on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, or of course, MajorNelson.com. Jacket not included. <laughs> and of course, you should uh, you should stay tuned May uh, for the May episode of Inside Xbox, where we're going to take you on a terrifying tour of post-zombie apocalypse survival. It's a survival game, Larry. Yeah, absolutely. With State of Decay 2. And I'll, I'll wear a State of Decay hoodie, and we'll think. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? I'll wear the hoodie. Show <laughs> number two is in the can. We are all done. Thank you for joining us for the April edition of Inside Xbox. Goodbye, everybody. See you later.